Welcome back to Remote Work, the show teaching you how to create a rhythm between your life and work so you can work better remotely or at least away from the main office. On today's show, I talk about the importance of community. Stay tuned. When you worked at an office on a regular basis, it was relatively easy to find other people, either on your team or in the building, that shared your interests, whether it be things like reading or gaming, healthy activities, like healthy living, fitness, things like that. Now that we're kind of all at home, we're in some sort of hybrid model where we're working remote far more often than we did before, it's a lot more challenging to have that human connection with another person because you're just not around them as often. And as much as we you know, have friends and we try to do things in our neighborhood or in the community we physically live in, you know, in the last year and a half, we've realized that can actually be really tough too, because if you can't organically go around somebody safely, how do you stay close to your friends and your family? And I, today I want to talk about community and why it is so important to maintain a community or in, more importantly, to foster a community when you're working in a hybrid world and working remote. You know, these communities, these groups of people that we would socialize with and spend time around are what build us up as people. It's what is make, make us feel human. You know, at the end of the day, community really is about being human. It's about being around other humans who share a common interest and about relationship building. You know, relationships are about, you know, supporting another person so they can, and they support you in something that you both appreciate, you both love doing, whatever that thing happens to be. So for me, I love Star Wars. I love reading. I love um, comic books. I love going to my local comic book store. And I, now today I can do that with my mask on. But a year ago, I couldn't do that. It was really hard. So it was a long time. I couldn't go support them or any support that I did do was highly transactional. I would just show up and pick up my books and swipe a card. And that was it. Couldn't interact with people. Couldn't socialize. It was really tough. And what I looked into is actually creating a live stream here on my channel, all about, or actually now on a different channel, all about Star Wars with a good friend of mine from work. However, that didn't just happen. We both had to work toward it and, and you know, be very intentional about how we spent our time. And that's what I wanted to spend the few minutes talking with you all today about is fostering a sense of community, building these connections with other human beings. It requires being intentional. It is a lot harder these days uh, now that we're in a remote work world, and that's probably going to be or a hybrid world. And that's going to be that way for a while. How do we ensure that we can continue to have a community that we can engage with and have friendships with and mutual interests with that make us feel better as people? And so I really wanted to get you all to think about uh, some key things that are important to me. So finding a shared interest. So whether that's a hobby you already have. Um, in the past, I love things like disc golfing. I love collecting comic books and reading comic books. Um, I like reading in general. I like doing video and live streaming. Um, but those may not be your things. Some other things could be healthy living. If fitness is your jam and you like spending time either working out or running or cycling, whatever you know, whatever those things are, all of these hobbies and things that you can you have, there are groups of people who enjoy those things as well. And so there's a lot of ways to engage with them. You can use traditional social media. Odd that I'm saying traditional for social media because it's not that new, relatively speaking. But you can use social media platforms, your Facebooks, your YouTubes, your Twitters, all of those sorts of things to find people that share your interests. That's that's one way. And especially a safe way because you don't have to physically be around them. But at some point, you're going to want to be around people. So how do you do that safely? And how do you find those people you can trust? Um, that takes some work. So using tools like that, using tools like Nextdoor is a good option here in the United States. Um, and through work, even setting up groups in your company's chat room, you know, um, whether that's a Slack or a Discord or something to that effect, you can find communities there that you can engage with. What I would suggest to you is finding one or picking one topic that you really want to be a part of and do a little bit of searching to find some communities out there that are already participating in that way. But don't just jump into it straight away. You want to test the waters of it. Um, you wouldn't just be friends with somebody the first time you ever meet them. It takes a little bit of time to establish a friendship. I would do the same thing with your with any community that you find. Be intentional about it. Look into them. See what they talk about. Contribute. Engage with other people and see if it works out for you. If it is, contribute a bit more. I was lucky enough in early 2020 to become part, uh, to join a group of people learning how to live stream video here on YouTube. And we did this in a private Facebook group, and everybody was very supportive. That was the purpose of the group. And luckily, a, a group of us walked away feeling really connected to each other. And so a few people can, created this private Facebook group for all of us to be there, to continue to support each other, and just to be friends. And we're all over the globe. That has worked out so amazingly well for me because while I haven't met any of them in person or most of them in person, which is obviously a bummer, 
we are still able to connect with each other and talk. We can message each other and jump on video whenever we want and talk to each other. And it's been fantastic. Some of the best relationships I have in my entire life I've developed in the last 18 months. And, but I had to be intentional about it. And I had to let myself be okay with building a relationship in this way. So I would encourage all of you, be intentional. Think about the things you're passionate about. What are your hobbies? You should have these things in your life. And they don't have to be big, huge, expensive things. They can be something simple like I collect comic books. They can be going to the gym or healthy living. It could be anything that you are passionate about. Pick one of those things and start looking around for a community that you can be a part of and see how you can engage and support other people. Because I promise you, supporting other people is the best way to build a relationship. It's not just about looking for something for yourself, but relationships are built in a bi-directional way. So get out there, help encourage other people. It's a really great way in community. Just remember, community is super important when you can't be around people a whole heck of a lot in a hybrid world. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments, what's that one hobby or passion you really want to find a community for? If you want to see more videos about hybrid work or just general geeky stuff, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time on Remote Work.